It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up live from the greatest city in the world and the city of brotherly love. This is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Pain Capital Management, along with Chief Investment Officer, the man with the plan, happens to be my father as well, Big Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking on this glorious 4th of July weekend? I guess it's technically 4th of July weekend, right? After 4th of July on Wednesday, I'm not really sure which weekend is technically 4th of July weekend. Oh, I took both I- weekends to celebrate, Ryan, because uh, <laughs> it is my favorite holiday of the year. <laughs> but it also depresses me because as soon as the 4th of July hits, it seems like the summer's over. Next thing you know, you, you, you blink and you miss it. It just seems like when the 4th of July hits, you're right. Summer just speeds up and all of a sudden it's Labor Day and that's just a buzzkill. So let's just try to enjoy the <laughs> moment. And you sound like you had two celebrations, Bob, last weekend and this weekend, which means you're the most patriotic guy I know or the laziest man I know. <laughs> well, like I wore a lot of red, white, and blue and you know, and sang the Star Spangled Banner as often as I could, right? I like it. I like it. Well, I saw a really interesting study this last week, Bob, by uh, Northwestern Mutual that looked at what the number one cause of stress among Americans happens to be right now. If you had to guess, what do Americans stress about more than anything else? Well, it's got to be money. It's always money or the lack of. Yeah, probably the worry about, do I have enough money, which would be lack of money. And you're right. 44% of the survey respondents said money is more of a problem than either personal relationships or work. In fact, it's even up over last year where only 37% or 37% of Americans said that they felt a high or moderate level of anxiety about saving for retirement. So definitely saving for retirement is on people's minds. And there is a other side of this coin though. 87% of those respondents said that nothing makes them happier than knowing that their money's in a good place which means planning is pretty important, Bob. As the old saying goes, you don't plan to fail. You just simply fail to plan. And that's why if you want to be one of those 87% happy folks, you should get a plan immediately. Yeah, exactly. Like, And what's more therapeutic? I mean, let's face it, Bob, our job is basically financial therapist. It's probably more apt than financial advisor. Yeah, the best course I ever took in college, Ry, was abnormal psychology. It's applied to this job for 43 years, <laughs> and it's uh, helped me to help you to achieve your goals. <laughs> I like that, abnormal psychology. Well, we've got a great show for you this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk about unreasonable requests. Like mm-hmm. most things in life, there is no free lunch when it comes to investing. Bob and I are going to discuss what expectations are realistic and what expectations are not realistic when investing your money for retirement. We're going to talk about, do you have an investment advisor or do you have a financial advisor? Is your advisor just managing your investments? Or are you getting complete guidance on your overall financial life? We're going to talk about the nuances and the differences between the two. And we have this week's financial pornography. There's a lot out there in the media, the news. You need to avoid it at all costs. We're going to tell you the more egregious things you need to avoid with your planning and retirement. And we have our spotlight segment today with Chris Payne, my brother, Bob's son, for an all-pain 4th of July weekend. He's going to discuss a real retirement plan he worked on and give you some tips and talk about some mistakes that a certain couple is making with their planning so to keep you on track with your own retirement planning. So let's hop right to it. Bob, well, certainly none of our radio listeners would be guilty of making any of these unreasonable requests. Let's talk about some of the more irrational expectations we sometimes hear. What makes them unrealistic and what proper expectations actually look like instead? And the one that we hear very often is, I want to get some bigger returns with little to no risk. Well, you know, that sounds like to me, Rise, when somebody wants an outsized return with little or no risk, that sounds like a free lunch. And you know what? There's no free lunch in life, and there's certainly no free lunch on Wall Street. What is the cost, Ry? What is the cost? What is the price of getting good returns in the financial markets? Yeah, in the financial markets, it's simply measured by volatility. How much am I going to see my investment fluctuate? 
And also uncertainty, right? Have you ever been a time in your life where everything's been certain? I think once, Bob, it was for like two <laughs> seconds, and then I went right back to uh, having no idea what's going to happen in the future. Well, that's the thing. You know, the, the, the markets take this emotional toll because if you're trying to be right all the time, you're just going to be wrong. The market doesn't look well. The market guys don't look well on people who are trying to have a shortcut to return. And it's really kind of simple, though. If you can just eliminate the noise, right? You eliminate the noise of volatility, uncertainty, and stick to a discipline, what usually happens, right? You get the returns that you need to get through retirement. And that's the thing that blows my mind. Over the last 20 years, the average investor has made 2% a year. And we've been in one of the greatest bull markets in our lifetime. How's that happen? Well, because let's face it, we get more greedy when the markets go up. We don't really pay attention to risk as much. We feel good. We don't want to have money in safe investments. And then bam, market correction happens. Now we want all our money out of risk investments. We want to be in safe investments. And that strategy just doesn't work over time because you need to maintain that discipline of, hey, things are going well. You need to manage the risk. You need to make sure that you have your safe investments in the portfolio to protect you. The market goes down. You've got to take advantage of those things. So it's really good investing is counterintuitive to what we want to do, Bob. Well, it is because you know what, Rye? What do people fear more? Making money or losing money? Oh, definitely losing money, right? The fear of loss. If you think about your own portfolio since 2008, you've been more worried about seeing another correction where you see your net worth decrease as opposed to making money. Yeah. I mean, over the last 20 years, we had two major bear markets and that's all investors are focused on. They're focused on 2000 and 2008. Very rarely do people bring up to me how wonderful this 300% return has been since March of 2009. So loss avoidance really puts a damper on your success as an investor. Well, it reminds me of a funny story too. I had a client recently when the market was really, really ramping up back in January say, you know what? The market's going up way more than my portfolio. I want a different portfolio. And you know, I just basically said to him, well, wait a second. We built you a Volvo. Now you want a Ferrari. <laughs> 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 it's like, Yo, dude. And you know, think about it. That's the thing. It's like, okay, great. I can put you into a more risky portfolio, but you need to be willing to see your portfolio go down a lot when the market goes back down. So it's kind of like you need to have some sort of discipline that says, I'm willing to accept or missing out on some of the upside so I don't get hit hard on the downside. It's a negotiation. No, sure it is, Ryan. And the thing is, all you need to do is accept the returns that the markets so generously give. But with that, you got to ignore the noise. You got to, you know, look at your investment as a long-term strategy, not like a sporting event where you think you got to do something every day or you're not, you know, you're not doing it properly. And the thing is, you tend to be more pessimistic, right? People don't really want to listen to optimism because they think an optimist is someone who's a Pollyanna. But really, you know, being an optimist is not saying everything is great. That's complacency, right? Being an optimist is to believe that the odds are in your favor. When it comes to investing, are the odds in your favor? If you're invested properly, yes. Yeah. So it's reasonable over time is that it's never different, but you got to stay consistent. And the best way to stay consistent is to have an investment strategy based on what your goals are and what your family needs, not on what everybody else is telling you in the financial media. Yeah. So if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need a discipline. I need a strategy to get through retirement. I'm winging it. This is your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, myself and Bob will run for you our famous total financial master plan. We'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a full, holistic, real financial plan. All you need to do is bring in your most recent statements, just throw them in a folder, throw them in a brown paper bag, bring them into the office. We'll take everything and we'll load it into a personalized 360 portal for you. And we'll take a bird's eye view of your whole financial life. And we're going to look at all the critical components to your portfolio. We're going to look at fees. Are you being overcharged on your investments? There's a lot of hidden costs in financial products mutual funds, annuities, insurance products. We're going to show you where all the hidden costs are. We're going to show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio. We're going to look at diversification. What risks, what hidden risks do you have in your portfolio? Are you taking too much risk? If the market corrects tomorrow, are you protected? Bob and I are going to show you how to bulletproof your portfolio. And we're going to look at income. Income is so critical for retirement. 
What is your income cap going to be in retirement? Or if you're retired now, we're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio to fill in that income gap. Then finally, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan and determine that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies our family has worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you saved over 200000 for your retirement, our team will create for you your own personal total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation and there's no cost, but there's no plan unless you text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne. I'm with my son, Ry Payne, and we're the pains of No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Good morning. This is Bob Payne, Managing Director and Chief Investment Officer here at Payne Capital Management. The first half of 2018 has come and gone, and it reminds me of the quote, time flies whether you're having fun or not. It was only six months ago as we entered 2018, and boy, oh boy, were we having fun with the stock market on one of its greatest runs in history. Our portfolios were up every month in 2017, and as one analyst defined the environment as comfortably boring, and we were all perfectly fine with that. By the end of January, the S&P had hit an all-time record high and was up 7.5% in just four weeks. But the positive tone quickly changed, and just 10 trading days later, we had our first correction in over a year and a half, with the S&P down 12% below that January high. Now, the S&P 500 has managed to stay above that February low, and continues to trade sideways, which is a perfectly normal event. Meanwhile, the NASDAQ composite, which we call the tech index, and the Russell 2000, which is the small company index, have both managed to exceed those all-time highs that they did reach back in January. Now, obviously, global trade has been front and center over the past few months, and the daily headlines are the primary culprit behind the increase in uncertainty about the future and the volatility that that uncertainty has produced. The market has focused more on the potential negative impact to global growth from a trade war versus the strong underlying economy. With powerful earnings growth, low interest rates, low inflation, low unemployment, and strong GDP numbers. So 2018 is flying by and has not been as much fun as 2017, but it's actually been in keeping with what the market does in a normal year. Investors' expectations were obviously way too high as we entered 2018, And now with the increased uncertainty, the expectations have been lowered, making it easier for surprises to come on the upside. As famous Merrill Lynch analyst Bob Farrell once said, bull markets are much more fun than bear markets. And in bull markets, surprises come on the upside. Now, if you're wondering, is my portfolio built to win? Why wonder when you could know? Give us a call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Six six nine two. Get a clear picture of your finances. I can't see nothing. Got to open my eye. Let's get back to the show. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain. Financial Radio, and Bob and I, we want to educate you, give you very simple, common sense advice every week that you can apply to your own financial planning, and that's why we put together our latest video guide: what you need to know about creating an income you cannot outlive. It's a simple video series to get you on track, just a baseline to get started with the retirement planning process. And you can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish to 555-888. Get started with the retirement planning process now. What you need to know about creating an income you cannot outlive Download it for free. Simply text the word bullish to 555 888. That's the word bullish to 555 888. So, Bob, it's probably safe to say our firm now reviews over, I would say, a thousand portfolios a year at this point. We probably at see least. at least. 
So we probably see every single investment strategy under the sun, and we get to see how most financial professionals work, which is that's a fair well, you know, assessment. I need some entertainment too, so that's uh, you know, <laughs> worth the price of admission. Bob, be nice to the competition. Be nice. I'm sorry. Okay. I digress. <laughs> Go ahead, son. I think one theme that we see over and over again is a lot of times your advisor is only managing your investments and not providing you guidance on other facets of your financial life. So I thought, let's discuss some of the things that your advisor really should be doing for you so that you make sure that you have a real financial advisor as opposed to just a broker or an investment specialist, per se. So, Bob, what are some of the main things that a real financial planner should be doing for you? Well, you know, I think, first of all, that the word comprehensive is a little overused, but in a comprehensive financial planning strategy, one of the things that we're seeing a lot of recently is you're coming in with a portfolio that's broken into something called the bucket strategy. Now, I'm going to let you know, Rye, bucket strategy stands for I want to sell you insurance. <laughs> that's actually pretty true. It's very true. And the thing that really I find very harmful is they now want to take one bucket and put it into an aggressive equity strategy to fund your health care costs, as if you're suddenly going to realize that having a portfolio that's going to be bombarded by volatility and uncertainty is going to make you a better investor because you now know that bucket is for your health care cost. And so, you know, it's like buying Amazon and then it goes down 90%. You're going to stay invested because it's for your health care cost? Yeah, probably not. Probably not because, again, investing is emotional. We're going to react to whatever's happening at that time. Yeah, so I think in a, in a comprehensive plan, you have to look at all your goals and they have to be coordinated. But then you have to manage every dollar you have in concert with every other dollar in every portfolio, regardless of how it's titled or where you custody the assets. So a comprehensive plan is really following common sense and knowing what you own and knowing why you own it. And that's what we call the A to B strategy, right, Right. It's as uh, simple as getting yeah. from point A to point B. Yeah, exactly right. And I think what always gets missed is that point B. Where are you going? And think about it in your own life. When was the last time you really established what your financial goals were? If you're working with a financial professional now, have they addressed that issue recently or at all? Because that's always my first red flag is because when you come into our offices, you typically have what I call a smorgasbord or a collection of investments where there's no rhyme or reason because no one ever addressed that age old question, Bob, you know, what are my goals? What am I trying to achieve? Yeah. And I think the best way you can tell that if you're looking at your statements as they come in uh, for the second quarter, do you have an overriding investment policy statement? Do you have a document that shows you what this means? Is there a wealth projection? I mean, how many of these portfolios, these thousand reviews that we do every year, right, come with a wealth projection or a coordinating document to tell you what it's all about? Yeah, ironically, there's a lot of people out there that put out a shingle as a financial planner that do a lot on recommending investings, but nothing on planning. And I think the other red flag is, Bob, number one, it's like, okay, no one's talked to me about my goals when I'm going to retire, if I'm retired now, what are my income streams? The other thing that I find with your portfolios, it doesn't address the most important question, and that's filling in your income gap. Because if you're retired or close to retirement, you have to replenish that income that's not coming in anymore. And most portfolios, I'd argue, Bob, don't address that major issue. Well, you know, if you think about it, you're looking at your last statement to really decide whether you're doing the right thing or not, which is kind of crazy. And the majority of these portfolios come in are taking way more risk than necessary. Right? We have people that are in the, in the financial red zone are already in retirement that are still 80, 90% in high risk assets. Yeah. And that's a scary place to be. Think about it oh. for your retirement. If you're dependent on living off your portfolio based on how well your portfolio is performing on a month to month basis or a year basis, that's a lot of faith in the markets, which we know, you know, there's no predictability to how they're going to react in any given year. And that's a really scary investment plan. Yeah. And I think that a lot of portfolios are positioned so that uh, it's based on what's happened recently. And a lot of you project the future based on your most recent experience. What you want to do is have a plan that shows you what if, you know, what if this happens? What if that happens? What position you're going to be in? We have history as a guide. What do you often say, Rye? History doesn't always repeat, but it often rhymes. Well said, Bob. Well said, because I said it. Yeah. And that, that also makes me think of something else as well. It's something that you really need to think about when building your plan is always think about worst case scenarios. I think there's a lot of projections that are put out there that are assuming that the best 
case scenario is going to happen. But as a realist and as a planner, I always say bulletproof your portfolio. You know, think about and hopefully your planner's doing this, thinking about what's the worst case scenario here. Run everything to the worst case scenario. Hope for the best, but plan for the worst. Yeah, but a financial plan is not just about investments. You know, what about the legacy to your children? What about your family goals? Hey, Ry, I don't know, on all those thousand plans that we reviewed over the last year, there are a lot of families that are responsible for the word fun and dysfunctional. <laughs> uh, and, you know, how many plans have we looked at where the trustee was a brother in law that they no longer speak to, or you have a beneficiary on your IRA that goes to a former spouse? You know, that your current spouse is not going to be very happy to see your million dollar IRA go to somebody that. <laughs> they really don't like. Yeah. And that's a good point. When was the last time your advisor said, hey, let's look at the beneficiaries and all your retirement plans? Because your will doesn't take care of that, by the way. It's dictated by the document that runs each of your plans. So if you have different IRAs out there, retirement plans at work, they all have to have the beneficiaries documented individually. And when was the last time someone even brought that to your attention that needs to be updated? That's huge. Yeah. And it's also looking at taxes, right? You say it over and over again every week. Money you save in taxes is just as green as money you make in a portfolio. But you know, a lot of advisors, they don't like to talk about taxes. They don't look at your tax return. They don't look at tax saving strategies. You know, that eh, some of them tend to be a little lazy. But you know, last year <laughs> you could have been doing some Roth conversions, right? Right. You could be doing the backdoor Roth. Making money by saving taxes is a phenomenal strategy. Well, I would say too, just a good litmus test if you're working with a good advisor who's worth their salt and not a good advisor is, does your financial planner have a relationship with your accountant? And if the answer is no, that's a big problem. You're, you're probably missing some big, big opportunities that should be addressed in your portfolio. Because I have to tell you, I don't have a client that I've ever worked with that I didn't have a strong relationship with the accountant because there's so many different decisions that need to be made in concert as a team and that's something that is so critical to putting together the right retirement plan for yourself. You know, Ry, it's a great point. And uh, these are all excellent points. And if you're sitting there thinking, maybe I just have an investment salesman or I have an investment stockbroker, or I don't have a true fiduciary financial planner, what we'd like to offer, if you're one of the next few callers and you've personally have saved 200000 for your retirement, my firm, Ryan and I, will create for you your own total financial master plan. Now, there's no obligation. And there's no cost. And if you're one of the next few callers, here's exactly what we're going to do for you. We're going to review your tax return. Not us, our CPA partner. We're going to look at your legal docs. 42% of you don't even have a will. We want to get on that path to establishing an estate plan that's not an IRU to the IRS. And lastly, we want you to bring in all your investment statements. Now, don't take the time to collate them and put them in order. Just take those envelopes as they come in for the quarter, throw them in a shopping bag, pick up the phone, text us, and make an appointment. We're going to break down your portfolio and analyze it to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy, diversification, cost, and income. You want to be diversified across asset classes and within asset classes. Most of you are being overcharged by your portfolio. Let's make sure you're not penalizing yourself through those horrible hidden costs that are buried deep in the prospectus or the policy of your insurance investments. And lastly, we talk about the income cap every week. Let's make certain that your income gap is covered. Whether you're in retirement or whether you're planning for retirement, let's make sure you have the cash flow to cover the basis of retirement. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one customized total financial master plan, answering that age old question, are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my family has been perfecting now for 43 years. That's right, folks. For four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams, with your values, with the least amount of risk, and with the most certainty that only a fiduciary like paying capital management can provide. So don't waste time. Call or text now, 844-752-6692. That's 844-752. 752-6692. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, get a complimentary review. That's 844-752-6692. Call or text 844-752-6692. Here's your shot to get a second opinion to make sure you're on track. 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. 6692. This is no pain, no gain. 
From your first encounter with the Payne Capital Management family, you'll notice a difference. First of all, the team doesn't represent any institutions. They represent their clients. That's the power of being independent. They really separate themselves from the large brokerages and how important their personal relationship is with you, the client. You can expect frequent communication about your plan from the team. And as a fee-based financial advisory group, Payne Capital Management embraces its fiduciary responsibility to help you make decisions that serve your best interest and no one else's. See what the PCM difference is all about. Call or text today for a complimentary review. 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. It's time for Financial Pornography of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. So Bob, what egregious information did you find out there this week in the world of financial pornography? Well, bro, I got a hot flash for you. America's wealthy are moving to cash as market enthusiasm hits a wall. Well, that's not a good decision. (laughs) Well, here's the best part. America's wealthy is determined by 750 people they call who said they were wealthy. That doesn't sound like a very valid survey, in my opinion. And they didn't actually go to cash. They're thinking about going to cash. (laughs) 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 And the best part about it, these millionaires surveyed, only 17% said they plan on adding to their stock exposure in the next year. Now, how do you know what you're going to do in the next year? Because you don't know what the market's going to do. And you know why you don't know what the market's going to do, right? Because it's unknowable, Bob. <laughs> exactly. So even supposedly millionaires, all 750 of them, don't know the unknowable. So how do they know what they're going to do if they don't know what's going to happen? What I think this is all about is what we call recency syndrome, right? Whatever yes. people experience recently is how they project the future. Now, markets have been pretty volatile. And flat for the year. What do you think most people are predicting, right? I'd say most of you are thinking to yourself, uh, it's probably not going to do that well this year, right? We have all this news about these tariffs, trade wars, interest rates going up. So I think that you're probably more pessimistic right now than optimistic. And the best thing is that these people have become more pessimistic and they're going to buy more if the market offers better value. So they're, they're claiming to be good market timers when in history... There's never been any. Yeah, I just spoke to a client recently that wanted to get money out of the market. He just felt like projecting out here, things don't look good in the short term. And really, if you think about it, that's not a great investment strategy because you feel that something's going to happen in the short term. I mean, the reality of it is, if you're an investor, you're not invested for the short term. You're invested in things like equities or stocks because they pay out a lot of cash flow. It's about being in over a long period of time. You know, that's what financial pornography is all about, right? Telling you how to stay uninvested. They give you all the reasons in the world to keep your powder dry, not to deploy your capital. And therefore, they give you the lowest probability of ever achieving your goals. That's what we do this segment about is to protect you from the charlatans in the financial media. Well, right in the same vein as the article that you found, Bob, I found one in Barron's this week, which I like to read that the cover story this past weekend was why the bull market could end in 2020. So first off- 2019? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) How can we be this accurate (laughs) about when the bull market's definitely going to end? And I went through this article and it had a lot of different analysts predicting different things. And one chief investment officer, head of strategy for Stifle Investments, recommended holding a bit more cash He said, sell a little bit of your equities and hold on to more dry powder. When the move occurs, you're ready to redeploy. And then the article goes on to say, that's not bad advice right now, especially because you can get closer to 2% on cash. Now, let's take a step back here. 2% on cash is not a good return on your money. I don't care if it's higher than it was a year ago, Bob. That's so true, Ryan. And what I loved about this article, and I read the same one, is that they're making these predictions based on some of the moves that the Trump administration has made. For example, the tax cut and all the benefits of the tax cut will be realized by 2020. Does that mean the Trump administration will do nothing else between now and 2020? (laughs) 
<laughs> and yeah, does that mean that companies will not look for other ways to make money in the next two years? It's it's pretty amazing. And I think the gist here is this. And I think you know you could be singing cash right now, thinking, all right, I'm getting two percent, my money's safe. That is a problem long term because if you look at the cost of living or inflation, as we call it, it's going up by more like three point one percent a year, which means every million dollars you have today is worth half that in about 20 years. So if you're getting 2% on your money, you're actually losing against what the cost of living is. And that's not a great investment strategy, no matter what market environment we're in. This is why these authors are so dangerous. You know, in, in January, when the market was hitting an all-time record high, lifetime highs, they were recommending fully invested. Now you're getting corrections, like the emerging markets have had a pretty healthy correction. Their advice is sell emerging markets, I mean, when do they ever tell you to buy? They always tell you to buy after it's gone up and tell you how you should have bought when it was down, right? That's the problem with financial pornography. That's why you need to plan a strategy based on you. Yeah, and I think the other thing that, that gets missed with all this financial pornography per se is the real magic to investing, we do talk about this often on the show, is the compounding of your money. You know, mm -hmm. even if the market is down a little bit this year, or it's flat a little bit this year, the money is still paying out cash flow or what we call dividends. You know, money on, on a bond portfolio is still paying interest and it's much higher than the 2% if you're lucky you're getting in cash right now, Bob. And I think if you're planning for retirement, the other thing is it's not only is your portfolio paying cash flow, but it's increasing the cash flow over time because dividends actually go up. This is where really solid investment planning comes in. And this is what gets missed when you start looking at these shorter term moves of the market. Yeah, but it sounds so much nicer, right, to have cash. Yeah, exactly, right? It sounds so sexy to have cash, and it's probably one of the worst things you can do, especially if you're trying to plan for a long retirement where you don't run out of money. You know, it all comes down to one thing. No one can time the market. I mean, no one. But if you give the market time, you always have success. Beautifully said, Bob. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, I need a portfolio strategy that's not based on emotion, but is based on my long-term goals. Here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 safe for retirement. Bob and I will give you that full review, our total financial master plan, and we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a real financial plan. So if you just bring in your statements, print them off on the printer, put them into your folder, whatever, bring them in the office, we'll sort through all of it. And we're going to build you a personalized 360 portal so we can take a bird's eye view of all your finances and we can do all the critical analysis that's necessary to get you to retirement or keep you retired comfortably. That's everything from diversification. We're going to look at what risks or pitfalls you have in your portfolio that you don't know about. So if the market goes down again, we're going to show you how to be protected proactively. We're going to look at fees. Are you being overcharged on your investments? There's a lot of high cost investments out there, insurance products, annuities, mutual funds. We're going to show you where all the costs are. We're going to show you how to reduce cost on your portfolio. And we're going to look at income. Income is critical in retirement. Reliable income is what's going to get you through retirement. We're going to look at what your income gap is, and we're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio to fill that income gap. Then we're going to tie it all together, and we're going to determine that age-old question. Are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies Bob and I have worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Don't miss out. Give us a call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers and you've saved over 200000 for your retirement, my son and I will create for you your own total financial master plan. No obligation, no cost, no strings attached, but you have to text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob. I'm with Rye. We're the pains of no pain, no gain financial radio. Hi, I'm a cleverly devised personification of Wall Street. I'm one wild roller coaster ride away from wreaking havoc on your investments. And I love to mess with your emotions. If you're not properly diversified, you can bet I'll keep you up all night thinking about me. There's really only one way to keep me off your mind, and that's by coming in for a visit with the team at Payne Capital Management. 
They'll ease your fears about market volatility with their signature Total Financial Master Plan. They'll even help you get financially organized with their 360 financial portal. It's a great way to get all your statements in one place. Otherwise, when I take a plunge, I'll send you scrambling through your file cabinet hoping you're well prepared. Don't wait for turmoil to hit. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Schedule your visit with Payne Capital Management. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Ready for what Bob and Ryan have to say next? All right, everyone, gird your loins. Let's find out. It's no pain, no gain financial radio. And Bob and I, we try to give you simple, common sense advice. We are simple men. And that's why we've put together our latest video series, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive. You can download it for free, get a baseline to start your retirement planning process at 555 888 Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. You can get a very simple baseline to get your retirement plan on track. Simply text the word bullish to 555-888. Download our latest guide, What You Need to Know About Creating an Income You Cannot Outlive. It's a simple three-part video series. Just text the word bullish to 555-888. Download a free copy. Text the word bullish to 555-888. And if you want to learn a little more about me and Bob, you can do that on the World Wide Web. And yes, Bob's hair is real, but check it out for yourself. Go to BeBullish.com. You can subscribe to our weekly show, and you can check out a little bit more about Pain Capital Management. You can catch me most weeks on Fox Business News, CNBC, which is recent market commentary. And if you ever have a question you want to ask myself or Bob, you can always email us questions at bbullish.com. That's questions at bbullish.com. Bob and I will answer your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we answer it right here on the show. And to help us with our email mailbag, we've got our producer, the man behind the scenes, Mark Haywood. Well, we do have a couple of good questions that have come in this week for you gentlemen here. Let's start off with Donna and Tribeca. Donna says, Bob, I just got a prospectus for an investment that's been proposed to me. I can't imagine actually sitting and reading through it all, and I don't know that I'd understand much even if I did. Am I hurting myself if I don't slog through the whole time? Well, Ryan, isn't that a great question? I mean, how many prospectuses have you read in your life? A lot. Right, but what's the most important part of a prospectus? What's the part you should read first? <laughs> you want to go through and find where the fees are, which is usually about fifty to hundred pages in, <laughs> and after that, the risk factors, right, which are generally about half the prospectus. You know, my That's favorite right. part about a prospectus is going to the risk factors, and especially if it's a new investment, when you find out that there's one thing that's never happened in history, that's the only thing that has to happen for this investment to blow up you can almost bank on it that that's going to occur in the next six months. It's a great <laughs> investment strategy. It's so true. And I think there's a good rule of thumb that we've used for many years. And that's however thick the prospectus is, or the thicker it is, the more you're getting taken advantage of in fees and risk. Yeah. You know, when you have a thick prospectus, it means the investment is way more complex than it needs to be. Or it might be like one of those things you talked about last week, right? That private investments. You know, I got a special investment for you. It's very private, which means it's going to cost you a ton. And we see a lot of those right now. And there's a lot of stuff in the news about some of these smaller brokerage houses selling some of these private placement type of investments. So whenever you hear the word private, to your point, Bob, exclusivity, that means you're probably being taken over the coals. <laughs> it's probably not a great investment strategy. And I think that's an important thing to think about with your overall strategy. If it's not simple and intuitive, if your advisor can't really articulate what you're doing in a very simple way, that's a big problem. Yeah. If you can't explain that investment to me in five seconds, then you've lost me. It's already way more complex than it needs to be. And you know, I'll tell you another, another red flag is when that prospectus comes wrapped in a beautiful, glossy brochure. <laughs> the glossier the brochure, the more you're going to pay. Those printing fees can mount up, right? And it comes out of your high. Just remember, you pay those fees. And it's usually 10 to 20% right off the top. 
Not pretty. Let's move over now to Jerry in Westchester. Jerry says, Ryan, I'm 65 and recently had a heart attack. I'm out of work for another week, but then I should be back to a normal schedule. My wife seems concerned about my future health, but I still have no plans to retire anytime soon. Can you tell her that I'll be fine and it's normal for people to work past 65? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> What's your number, Jerry? I'll have a nice conversation with her about how concerned I am that you're not setting things up right, even if you want to continue to work. And I have an experience like this recently. In the last year, we did have a client who had a stroke, was completely incapacitated, didn't tell his wife where anything was, and between his wife and their grown son, it took us months to finally put all the financials together and that's why it's so important, Bob, and we, we preach this all the time, is getting your house in order. And that's why we have our 360 portal for that reason alone. Yeah. So many of you forget the fact that uh, you may be the financially savvy partner in your relationship and the other person may be just disinterested or you know more focused on other things in their life. You're doing a tremendous disservice to your family if you don't put everything into one spot. You know That's why we created that 360 financial portal, right? specifically for the surviving spouse you know, to not panic while they're mourning. And I also think it's important for your spouse to have, even if they don't want to be involved in the finances, which we do see a lot, but really having them involved in the meetings and knowing who your financial planners are. Because if something happens to you, the stress on your spouse is so tremendous. If they have a relationship with the team that knows where everything is, can walk them through everything, and it's not like they're complete strangers when something happens to you, that's going to take away a lot of, of the anxiety that comes with such a, a hard time in someone's life. So I think making sure that there is a relationship there too is, is a very critical component to this. You know, and it's not just about your family, right? So it's, it's really about, uh, you know, many of you think that, oh, well, I don't have to plan because I'll just keep working. I love what I do. I'll just keep generating income. You know, who needs to save? Who needs a plan? Who needs a 401k? Well, here's what happens. You know, sometimes your health gets in the way, right? In this situation, had a heart attack. So many, so many people I've seen have health issues where their brain was fine. They simply couldn't get to work. And then what about if your company decides to downsize you? You know, there's so many pitfalls of a strategy that's based on you winging it on whether you're going to be healthy or employable the rest of your life. That's it's exactly right. If you want to keep working, great, but find out if at least you're financially secure. And that's why it's critical to do planning, even if you're not going to stop working. Like I said earlier in the show, you know, hope for the best, but always plan for the worst. Yeah, right. I mean, think about your biggest hero in history, you know, Ben Franklin. Was he retired at 65? He was still negotiating our peace with France in his mid 70s, which is actually pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I don't plan on retiring anytime soon. It's not exactly like like we're breaking rocks every day. But, you know, why not have a plan where you know you're set for life and you can do whatever you want, whether you want to work or not? And, Rye, when you think about Donna and Jerry in terms of being financially organized, on a scale of one to 10, how financially organized did they sound? Sounds pretty bad. I'm going to say a two. Usually I say three, but this is definitely a situation for a two. Sorry, Jerry and Donna. Yeah. How financially organized do you think they'd like to be? You all want to be a 10, Bob. Yeah, no kidding. If you'd like to be a 10 and you're one of the next few callers and you've saved at least 200000 for retirement, Ryan and I will create for you your own 360 financial portal. Now think about it. Having everything organized in one spot where you can look and see what your net worth is or what your financial plan looks like when you feel like looking at it. We'll have every goal displayed and exactly how you're progressing toward those goals. If you're one of the next few callers, here's exactly what this will do for you. We'll have your tax return reviewed by our CPA partner. We'll have your legal docs reviewed by our estate planning attorney to be certain that your estate plan is not an IOU to the IRS. We're going to have your portfolio evaluated to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy. Diversification, fees, and income. You want to be diversified across asset classes and within asset classes. You don't need any surprises in your portfolio at any point in your life. You don't want to be someone who's penalized by being overcharged by your own portfolio. I don't know about you, but I hate being overcharged. And we also want to look at income. We want to be certain that we have a stream of income that fills that gap in retirement, not just when we're planning for retirement, but especially when we're in retirement. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together for you into one customized total financial master plan, utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting now for over four decades. We want to answer that age-old question. 
Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you? And we want to get your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. So don't waste time. We have a couple slots left. If you call or text now, 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, grab one of our last slots at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. This is your shot to get that second opinion to make sure you're on track at 844-752-6692. That's call or text 844-752-6692. 6692. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. Hi, it's Ryan and Bob here, and we want to talk to you about your cash. Bob, many of us are sitting on a lot of cash right now in our businesses and personal savings accounts, and rest assured the banks are taking full advantage of our dormant cash. That's right, Ryan. Not only do you have to worry about FDIC insurance limits, but most savings accounts pay close to 0%. Exactly right. And that's why we're putting together short-term CD ladders so you can have increased FDIC coverage, and not to mention rates that are in many cases double what your local savings and local checking accounts are paying. If you want to learn more about how to manage your cash better, simply text the word CASH, that's C-A-S-H, CASH, to 844 844- 752-6692. That's text the word cash, C-A-S-H, to 844-752-6692. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And Bob and I, we like to give you common sense, practical advice. That's why we put together our latest video series, what you need to know about creating an income you cannot outlive. It's a great baseline just to get the financial planning process started. And you can download it for free. Simply text the word bullish, that's bullish, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. That's the word bullish, to 555-888. This is a nice way to just get started. What you need to know about creating an income you cannot outlive, you can download it for free. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's 555-888. And we have a very special guest on the show this morning. My brother, Bob's son, financial advisor, Chris C. Payne. Actually, no, it's Christopher Robert Payne. (laughs) I almost forgot. Happy 4th of July weekend, Chris. Good to have you on the show, brother. Happy 4th of July weekend, brother. It's good to be here, as always. Um, So, yeah. House of Payne today. It is the house of pain today. It is truly the house of pain today. And Chris, you know, I'm honored that you took some time between sailing your sailboat this weekend, your catamaran, to uh, be on the show and work on a case. So why don't you give us the rundown on the actual portfolio that you had done an analysis on this past week? Well, you know, right, it, it's really difficult to pull me away from my sailboat. This is just the kind of dedication that I had to my brother and my father. <laughs> I feel the love. As you should. So this was a really interesting case. This is a couple that I met down in Florida, and um, I noticed a, quite a few things about about their portfolio right off the bat. So the you know the one thing I noticed, and let's just talk about planning a little bit, is that what you don't see here is that they actually have quite a bit of annuities. So most of their liquid assets are in annuities right now, fixed annuities, which are right now only yielding between like one and three percent. So they have a lot of income, but the biggest problem is is that those annuities are going to end on his life. And he is substantially older than his spouse. So the biggest liability that I see in this plan is that while you have a lot of money coming in, that's all going to stop when he walks out on life. So right. in a sense, what's really happening here is that it's putting her at risk. And that's really what we have to plan for. So you have an income gap for his wife. And I mean, just out of curiosity, what's his feelings about these annuities that were, I'm assuming, sold to him, not bought per se? Well, his idea and his view of the world is that he wants to be really conservative and really have an income-based portfolio, but he does acknowledge yep. the fact that he isn't getting generating a lot of income, and uh, one of his biggest concerns is, is rising cost of living, you know, inflation going forward. So one of the things that we looked at, we did an analysis of some of his other liquid assets, you know, a portfolio of, of equities and bonds. And one of the things I noticed off the bat was that this isn't really an egregiously aggressive portfolio. You know, right now, 
sitting about 66% equities, you know, not, not super aggressive, but you know, as I like to say, the devil does lie in the details. So one of the things I noticed in looking through a lot of the funds that they have is that these funds are, are leveraged, meaning that they're borrowing against the portfolio itself. So, so Chris, when you say they're, they're leveraging, they're borrowing money, are they borrowing from the portfolio against the portfolio using margin like you can at any custodian to buy more shares? Or are the internal investments actually using leverage as is is part of the portfolio strategy by the fund to use leverage to juice the returns? It's the latter, Dad. The, the funds, in fact, are leveraged. So that comes with additional cost and a, a lot more risk, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. So basically, if the fund is, is leveraged three times, that means that they'll get three times the return on an up market. But then it's a double-edged sword. They'll get three times the downside on a down market. And Ouch. for somebody that's 73 years old, Whoa. that's way more risk than they could ever possibly need. Well, that's the thing. It's conflicting with what they said that they want to be really conservative. Is that something a risk they didn't understand until you pointed out to them? Or is that something they were comfortable with that risk, thinking that it was professionally managed? It's the former. They had no idea that the funds that they owned were leveraged. They didn't know the kind of risk that they were taking. Well, of course, you know, they they were probably told by their broker that they were given a prospectus, right? I mean, it's just that sometimes you need to know what you own and know why you own it. Exactly. And and that was even if the broker even reached out to them, which uh, didn't sound like that was happening either. So even more outrageous than the fact that they had funds that were leveraged, I found that the expenses were even worse. So just looking through their portfolio, what I found on average is that they're paying in excess of 3% a year just to be invested in these funds. So 3% a year, as uh, you compound that over time, that's an enormous amount of expense going out of the portfolio into the pocket of the the salesman. Now, are they they able to find investments that you can invest in at a lot lower cost, Chris, and, and have the same or better performance? Absolutely. And in fact, when we run a comparison of the income, you know, with the additional income we're able to generate and the cost savings each year, a net net, we're able to increase their income by over $20,000 a year. Wow. That's real money. That's like a, that's a new, uh, reasonably priced car every year. Exactly. And if you look at that over a 20 year period, that's over a half a million dollars. It could be a new catamaran, Chris. (laughs) <laughs> a brand new catamaran. I don't know about you guys, but I could certainly use an extra half million dollars. So, Rye, if you're thinking about giving a raise this year, I wouldn't say no. <laughs> Keep dreaming. Keep dreaming. So we have um, a situation where the client thought they were being conservative, but they weren't getting returns. So maybe that's what sparked the interest in, in meeting with you. So if, not only will they get more income, but their returns historically will be higher simply because they're not paying it out in fees. Exactly. Sounds like a win to me. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, reducing costs like that, increasing income. I mean, that's the name of the game. Another, as Bob would say, Chris, financial masterpiece. Great job on putting this portfolio in the right direction. Thanks, Ryan. It's always a pleasure to uh, be doing radio with you and dad, having the uh, full paying crew. <laughs> it's, it, it, it doesn't get better than this. And if you're thinking to yourself, I need a review like this. I need to know the fees I'm paying. I need to know what my income gap is and how to fill it. Here's your shot to do it. We have a couple slots left. If you call now and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, the House of Pain, Ryan Payne, Chris Payne, Bob Payne, will run for you our famous total financial master plan, and we'll do that with no obligation or cost. It's a review just like this. Just bring in all your statements. Keep it simple. Print them out. Put them in a folder. We'll review everything. We'll put it in a personalized 360 portal for you so we can take a holistic bird's eye view of your whole situation. And we're going to look at the same things we looked at for this couple. Can we increase the income on your portfolio? Were you able to increase the income on this portfolio by over $10,000 a year? How can we do that for you to get that income gap filled? We're going to look at fees. Some of the hidden costs on these portfolios were over 3%. What hidden costs do you have on your portfolio? We're going to show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio. And in the case of this couple, that was almost $20,000 a year between fees and increased income. Real money. And we're going to look at diversification. If the market goes down tomorrow, what hidden risks do you have in your portfolio? We're going to show you where your blind spots are and how to protect yourself or bulletproof your portfolio. Then we're going to tie it all together and we're going to run our total financial master plan to determine... That age-old question, are you going to outlive your money? Or more importantly, is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies our family has worked on now for four decades to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk 
and the highest odds of success. So we have a few slots left. Don't miss out. All you have to do is text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers and you've saved over 200000 for retirement, the Payne family will create for you your own total financial master plan. There's no obligation and there's no cost, but there's no plan unless you text or call 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. All right. Well, a great all pain. I love that house of pain. Fourth of July. House of financial pain, buddy. House of financial pain. I'm I'm getting it down. I like it. Uh, Fourth of July weekend. Chris, you can now go back to, to sailing the weekend away. I'm already sailing, Rye. I've already left. <laughs> You're already on the boat. Big Bob, it's a pleasure man on this 4th of July weekend. Yeah, i got to go out and raise the flag, Rye, get going for my, my second 4th of July celebration. <laughs> it's good to be Bob. All yes, right, sir. well, have a great 4th of July weekend. And as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.